Hey there, comic book friends. I'm Travis, and this is another edition of What the Few, where I talk about what's going on with me in my week in comics. Um, this is just a quick, well, I don't know how quick it'll be, but uh, I'm using my webcam to see if I can process this thing quicker while I've still got thoughts in my head and the stuff I want to talk about. Uh, mostly, I'm going to talk about, um, as we all pretty much know, um, Gail Simone was um, taken off of Batgirl, and I kind of want to talk about that whole that whole thing. Um, you know, she's been referred to as fired and things like that. I don't. I mean, I guess fired might be the term for it. Um, but um, basically, a couple days ago on Twitter, she announced um, after it was put on Bleeding Cool that she was going to um, no longer be writing um, Batgirl. She um, was. Um, you know, she got an email basically telling her from her new editor that she was no longer the writer on Batgirl. So take that as fire. Take that as whatever you want to. Um, I, I think it sucks. And this is why I, I think it sucks. I mean, I, I know um, as freelancers, you, know, you, you have your gig as however long you have your gig and then um, you, you get pulled off of it. Sometimes that's by your choice. Sometimes that's by the editor's choice, depending on what they do. Um, my issue really is the fact that... Um, you know, she was basically um, taken off the book by email. That seems really tacky to me. Um, if you want to call it a firing, um, I don't think anybody should ever be fired by email. Uh, I don't care who they are or what they do. Um, you know, some of you who follow me on Twitter know I kind of ranted about that a little bit. I, I am a manager myself. I've been a manager for a lot of years. And even people I absolutely hate and detest, I would never fire by email. I just think that's really poor. And in this case especially, because Gail Simone has been nothing but a champion of DC Comics. Every change they've ever made, all the stuff they do, she's a champion of most of that stuff. You know, she continues to talk about how she's working on trying to get more of the diversity within DC and that sort of thing, but she's always been a champion uh, of that. So them to kind of, you know, ceremoniously just dump her uh, by email seems rather irritating. Now, them taking her off of Batgirl, I'm actually, I collect Batgirl, and I'm actually fine with that. Um, I understand it's a business decision. They wanted the book to go in a different direction than what, obviously, than what Gail wanted it to go in, and so that's why they moved off the book. Um, and, and I don't have a problem with that. You know, to tell you the truth, if you go back and watch my reviews for almost nine issues, I kept talking about the fact that I didn't think the book was really that good, um, that it still had problems and, and that things need to be fixed and whatnot. But I also think that there's no way this Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, would have been successful at all, probably, if it wouldn't have been Gail Simone, the one that reintroduced her to the New 52. Um, with her, with Barbara Gordon being changed from being Oracle, who is an extremely popular character, um, and then shifted to Batgirl, back to Batgirl again, with no real reason for doing that other than, you know, somebody thought that was the iconic person to put there or whatever. Um, I don't think anybody else could have pulled it off and had fans accept it, except for Gail. Anyone else would have done the book. Um, you know, there would have been readers, obviously, but it wouldn't have been accepted by the hardcore fan base um, like it was because Gail's the one that wrote it. Um, now, what's going on with Gail? I have no worries about Gail and her having a job. She will get a job anywhere she wants a job at. I know that um, her contract, her exclusive contract with DC was up a while ago. Um, and this was the last book that she was writing for DC. Now, does that mean she won't write more DC books? I don't know. I don't know that that's the case. I'm not saying that they won't offer. I mean, she's tweeted that she's gotten lots of positive feedback from the higher ups at DC. You know, this is one editor. Um, I did say on, on Twitter that I had planned on not picking up anything that that editor was working on because I thought his um, management style sucked. Uh, I'm going to dial it back a little bit. Uh, not because I don't want to collect books, but just because um, you know there are other people involved in those other books, and I don't know that they deserve to um, not collect a paycheck because of one editor. Um, but I am not going to collect um, Batgirl after the Gail Simone run is done, um, and that's mostly out of protest. I mean, I'm marginally curious as to see um, what the new writer is going to be like on Batgirl. Um, it's Ray Fox. He's a, um, Canadian. Um, I know he does lots, he's done lots of work, um, through the independent press, Oni Press. Um, I, I think he has a lot of talent. 
Um, and he might be a really good writer on that. He's also um, helping write uh, Justice League Dark with um, with um, Jeff Lemire right now, as Jeff Lemire is taking on more and more um, work. So it might be a good book. It might be the change that the book needed. Obviously, um, you know, editorial must not have been happy with the way direction that Gail Simone was taking the book, which doesn't make sense to me because um, that has been a critically acclaimed book and has sold um, very well um, for a female lead type book. And we all know that female lead books, unfortunately, don't sell as well as some of the other books do. So for a female lead book, um, it does very well. And so I'm not sure what this change is about. I, I would love to hear the justification. I'm sure we never will hear the real justification behind that. Um, but as I said, I'm not really concerned about, um, you know, Gail. I've seen some people's videos about, you know, what else could she be out there? Of course, everybody wants to place her in Marvel. I'm not, I'm not putting out, I'm not betting that she won't still write some other DC books. Because I don't think she hates DC. I don't think she gets along with his current editor. Um, but I don't think that she, um, I don't think that she hates DC. Um, she always talks about how much she really likes those characters and that playground, and she likes writing that kind of thing. Um, I want to talk further about the whole boycott thing. Um, you know, we called for a boycott to boycott all of DC, um, which, you know, no criticism on anybody for wanting to do that. Um, that seems extreme, and, I, and I'm not sure... Because there, I mean, if, if you think that the only place that, that has asshole managers is DC, you're, you're wrong. Marvel has plenty of them too. Um, you know, a lot of people consider me a DC guy. I don't really consider myself a DC guy. DC is my, my favorite characters are in DC. Um, but I don't know that I'm necessarily a fan of the DC company. At this point, I go back and forth on, on that, but I like the characters in the DC universe better as a general rule than the characters that are in the um, that are in the Marvel universe. Um, but I like a lot of the characters in the Marvel universe too. But one of the reasons I have a hard time collecting Marvel stuff is because the company leaves a sour taste in my mouth lots of times, and, and this is examples of why they leave a sour taste in my mouth. Um, not the creators. The creators, any of the Marvel creators I've ever come in contact with have been really cool people at conventions, um, you know, online. They're really cool people and, and all of that. But some of their editors are real um, jackasses too. Um, my, my experiences are things like going to cons and like there'll be, a, there'll be a Marvel panel in a room and then after the Marvel panel is over with, there'll be a DC panel. And if I don't go to the Marvel panel, I always get there early so I can catch the DC panel, and I'll be there early enough to catch the tail end of the whatever Marvel's talking about. And they always have really shitty comments to make about, editorial does, about DC. They always have these really crappy, no reason to, to, to say them, crappy things to say. Um, and then they'll leave and DC will come in and the DC editorial and whoever else is on the panel will be there. And people will comment on the fact that Mo Marvel said this and DC, they're always professionals. Um, they have no, they don't say any ill willed type things. They're never ugly people. Also, I'll, you know, I follow tons of comic book creators and comic book ish type people on Twitter. That's really why I have mostly have a Twitter account. And, um, it's always the it's always the Marvel editors that are just saying really crappy stuff. You know, DC will do something or somebody else will do something, and they just have they they just have to really crap on everybody else's stuff for some reason. I don't know if it's to make themselves feel better or it's to try and make themselves seem cool or if it's a matter of they're frightened by what somebody else what some other company is doing, so they have to try and tear it down. It's just it it. It gets really old and it really bugs me. And so that's my beef with Marvel. It's not the characters. It's not the creators. It's the people at the top. So if I were to not buy comics based on people being jackasses, um, I, I would be really hard. It would be very, very hard for me to, to buy superhero comics. I was thinking about a couple days ago. Okay, how many... How many superhero comic books are there 
that's not produced by the big two. It's not produced by DC and Marvel. And art, if they're a superhero book, they're more of a book um, messing with the genre as opposed to just being part of that genre. And I'm like, okay, so Image has like two books, I think. They have like um, Invincibles and Guardians of the Globe that are kind of fit the traditional superhero book, superheroes doing superhero things. Um, and, and then you've got some Valiant books that fall into that category. Um, and that's it. I mean, there aren't are any other companies. So I love comic books. And I love reading all types of comic books. Um, I love the no cape stuff that I'm always talking about. I, I love sequential art. So I like all reading lots of different types of comic books. But I also really like the superhero genre. Uh, I, mean, I play games the superhero genre. I, as a kid, wrote my own stuff, drew my own drawings, made up role-playing games, played role-playing games. It all have to do with superheroes. I love the superhero genre. And, and how can I enjoy the superhero genre if, if I were to boycott because of crappy, um, because of crappy um, editors? I, I wouldn't be able to. And um, so... You know, I don't know. It, it so it makes it it makes it hard. It makes it hard for me to decide. You know what the heck to do now. I do boycott creators that I don't like. Creators that I think represent things that 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 that, that bother me. I'm not going to get into those now. Um, but if I find out that somebody's some sort of a horrific bigot or whatever, I don't care how great their stuff is. They're not getting my money. Um, and and whereas I'm not going to starve everybody out. That that Brian Cunningham, the editor, that. Um, that basically, you know, canned Gail by email, which I think is very tactless. He certainly could have called her and said, hey, this is what's going on, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's pretty um, cowardly or whatever you want to call it to, to fire somebody by email. So I, um, you know, there, he, he edits a lot of books, and I don't necessarily want to take away from those people that are doing those other books. Um, but I am going to use Batgirl as a statement to say I'm not buying this. Um, and um, I, I know there's a lot of people who are going to, because Gail Simone has a huge fan base, a very loyal fan base that, you know, whether they should be taking it personally or not, are going to take it personal that she's not in the book anymore and are going to bail off of it. Um, I'm real curious to see how those drop and whatnot. So that's kind of where I am with that. Um, that's why I, I'm not, I didn't jump on board with the, yeah, let's, let's just ban all of DC. It's not that I can't survive without, without DC Comics. I, I can. Um, it, it, it's just not a line that, that, that makes sense ultimately to me um, to do. I and mean, there's lots of people who, who get removed off books all the time and career changes and editorial stuff and whatnot. Um, it just feels wrong to me the way they have uh, that to not to take Gail off the book. I'm, I'm okay with that. That's a business decision. That's fine. It's just to me, seemingly the way they went about doing it seems wrong with what a loyal employee that she has been. Not that that means she should just be granted whatever she wants. You know, that's not what I'm saying either. But, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure that I got out what I wanted to talk about or whatever. But just the fact is, like, I, don't, I, I can't boycott a company based on one, one person's actions. Um, it's just like I didn't boycott it when they did the New 52. And let me tell you, when they first brought up the New 52 and they were going to change everything, I was livid about the fact but. I like the superhero genre. So I'm going to see what they have to do with it because I like reading about superheroes. At the end of the day, I like reading about superheroes. Um, is it all fine, high literature? No. Some of it's certainly better than other stuff. Um, you know, and am I a DC guy? I don't know if I'm a DC guy. I mean, I guess I, guess I am. Those are the characters I embrace more. But I do read some of the Marvel stuff. I'm picking up a lot of the Marvel Now stuff to see what I like or don't like. Um, and I don't dislike anything solely because it's... Marvel, um, you know, either it, it's it's going to work for me or it's not going to work for me, and and I'm giving it the same opportunity that I gave the new Fifty Two. Um, I hope. Anyway, I think that's it. Oh no, I got other stuff to talk about. Let's talk about some other stuff. There's lots of other changes going on at, at um, DC too, and because of course I pay more attention to DC than I do the the Marvel stuff. Um, and the Marvel stuff's all kind of being set as the whole Marvel Now thing's going on. But um, it was announced that um, Scott Snyder is going to be ending his run on Swamp Thing. Scott Snyder and um, 
Yanni Paquette, that's how you say his name, something like that, um, the artist, they're done. They're, it, of course, they're not being kicked off the book or anything like that. It was fully their intention to leave the book. They actually were on the book, they've said, longer than what they originally planned. I think that's because Rot World kind of got out of control and <laughs> became a much longer thing than what it planned on it. So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see who's next. I kind of want to see what, see if Scott Snyder had other stories beyond this. Seems kind of strange to me that he's only got, really, one storyline in his head. But I know he's got so much stuff going on that something had to give, and that must have been what he decided to give up on because he's got a new Superman book coming out and that kind of thing. But you would have thought, with as much as he loved this character or not, that he'd have more than one story to tell about Swamp Thing because this really feels like it's been kind of one story. There are little stories in between, but really it's one big story that he's, that he's been telling. Um, but anyway... Curious to see who's coming next. They haven't said anything like that. It'll be really interesting to see where Swamp Thing goes after this, especially now that we're going to have a new writer on it also. Um, so they, um, and of course, that also brings up the, oh my gosh, is Jeff Lemire going to be leaving you know, Animal Man? Because you know he's got all this other stuff going on too. And Jeff Lemire has um, assured everybody that he has plotted out at least issue, clear out to issue 30 of Animal Man. Now, he hasn't actually written the script clear out to issue 30 but he's got a plot he's got a storyline clear out to issue 30 so i'm really cool about that i hope they'll go back and explore some of the stuff they were exploring before we got into the whole rot world stuff and whatnot um what else do i got to say i can't think of a whole lot else there's a bunch more marvel now books coming out this week i don't think i'm going to pick many of them up i've been told that this is the week that um um the arena avengers arena or whatever it's called that book's coming out no interest in that whatsoever. Uh, I think uh, Cable and X Force, is that what it's called? It's coming out this week. Somewhat interested in that. I, I'm not a fan of Cable, but that, that group's got some other really cool people that I like. It's got, um, you know, like it's got Domino. It's got the, what, Dr. Nefarious? Is that the guy's name? Something like that. Guy that shoots the weird shells of crap or whatever. Um, those, some of those characters interest me. Ah. Uh, you know, and I know it's it's sister or brother book that's out, the other X-Force book. That kind of interests me, too. you got the Mohawk Storm. You've got Spiral in there. Mm, there's some interesting people in that one, too. I don't know. Um, it's But the double shipping thing is just overwhelming to me. Uh, not, not just not just money-wise, just overwhelming to me as a as a reader. Um, but that, that may be another story when I pick those up and whatnot. Um... I, I did pick up, I did end up picking up um, uh, Thunderbolts and um, number one and uh, Avengers number one. If you want to hear kind of my opinion on those, go watch the last um, comic book podcast that we did. I talk about it there. I, you know, just briefly, I didn't like Thunderbolts. The story was okay. I mean, it was just average as far as story goes. The art really bothered me. Um, it was extremely bland. Um, the idea of eating cardboard is more appealing than looking at the art that's in that book. Um, and um, the Avengers actually was kind of interesting. Um, it was kind of a big, kind of heavy cinematic scope to it, which is kind of cool. Um, but I don't know that I'm on board with that because of the whole double ship thing. Maybe I'll pick up a trade because, heck, at the double ship rate every two months, they'll have enough comic books to put out a trade, right? So. Anyway, there's that. I've run on for, you know, 18 minutes or so or more now. Um, so I think I'm done. Hopefully this video won't be too crappy um, um, quality-wise and whatnot, but we'll see. Maybe I'll do more like this, or probably this will be the last one, depending on how it looks. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. Um, what do you guys have to say? Anything? What's going on in your week comics? Better than my week? Talk to you later.